So we are in the second week of a series entitled Under New Management. We're talking about self-management. We need to understand that how we manage will determine what we reap. God gives each and every one of us resources to advance his kingdom. And how we manage those resources will determine what we reap in life. We also need to understand that your life right now is perfectly tailored to get the results that you're currently getting. So if you don't like the results that you're getting in life, then we need to alter the dynamics of our life in order to get different results. Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Last week we talked about our emotions and how our emotions are resources to be managed well. And everybody is given different sets of emotions. Some are, some are prone to anger. Some are not. Some are prone. Uh, we have different dynamics when it comes to our own emotional ranges. But each one of us is called to manage and steward those well. Well, this morning we are going to talk about our financial resources how God is calling us to manage our financial resources well. We're going to talk about giving. Now, I know some of you right now are going, oh, the preacher's talking about money. I go, oh, I forgot. I, I've, I got to go get a root canal or something. I got to do anything other than hearing the preacher talk about money. And I know some of you, for the last 10 seconds, you're, you're, what you're hearing, as soon as you heard money, I turned into the teacher on uh, Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. I know this because I used to be that guy. I want you to understand this morning that I am not talking to you from a place of dogmatic authority. I am talking to you as a reformed, spoiled churchgoer. I grew up, I could have cared less about offering. The most I ever cared about giving to the house of the Lord when I was a kid, and I wanted to beat the girls in children's church, because we would do a contest, boys versus girls, on who could bring in the most offering. That's the only time growing up I cared about giving to God. Any passion, desire I have for missions was birthed in me by my wife. I was a spoiled, spoiled American church grower, goer. So I am reformed, luckily, um, through the many prayers and influence of other people in my life. So that's where, that's the place that I'm speaking to you um, from. I remember several years ago, they had a, a DVD come out called the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. Uh, anybody remember that? Jeff Foxworthy and Larry the Cable Guy. And all. Well, there was one of them, I just, I remember it, um, the comedian Ron White did a, did, did a bit where he's, you know, it's up late at night eating Cheetos, flipping around, and, and turns on a televangelist. And the televangelist says, are you lonely? And he says, yes. Are you sick and tired of life? Yes. Are you sitting up at 2 o'clock in the morning in your robe eating Cheetos, watching me? Yes, I am. Do you feel led to sow money into this ministry? Nope, not me. Close. Almost had me, not me. <laughs> there is a certain, um, certain hesitancy that we have when it comes to talking about our finances in the kingdom of heaven. Here's, here's the truth of it. We're all given resources. And how we spend those resources, how, where we point those resources will help determine the quality of our life. Our culture, our society has no problem telling you and I where we need to spend our money. Budweiser has no problem telling us where we need to spend our money. And if companies like that have no problem talking about finances, then we shouldn't have a problem talking about our finances in the house of God. But one thing we need to understand is this. While money, we tend to let it make it off limits in the house of God. But I believe that as we talk about this, there will be people that you will, you will find freedom today 
freedom and a depth of understanding. Because money matters are matters of the heart. And we're talking about the heart. More than just dollars and cents, we're talking about the heart today. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. I'm going to be reading out of the Christian Standard Bible today. It says this, Do not look at his appearance or his stature, because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees. For, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. The Lord sees the heart. I've heard it often said that if everyone in the church would just tithe like they, tithe like they would supposed to, then the church would never have a money problem again. I will tell you this, I don't agree with that because I believe it goes deeper than that. It's not just an issue of the bottom line. It's not an issue of dollars. It's an issue of the heart. It's a matter of the heart, about being a generous and giving person. And there are people who give greatly and they give money freely but they don't have a generous heart. And so we're talking about having a generous heart today. And I want each and every one of us to stop and do a inventory of not our pocketbook, not our how much money we have, but do an inventory of our heart because that is the most important part. In fact, if you look at the Gospels, Jesus continually talks about the heart first and foremost. Where others are concerned with rules, regulations, and the appearance of things, Jesus is solely focused on the heart. In regard to the rules, the regulations, and the Ten Commandments, Jesus says... There are two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. For on these two laws rest the entirety of the law. So he's not talking about a set of rules or regulations. He's talking about the heart. His biggest issue that he had was with the Pharisees. He called them blind guides who look great on the outside, but on the inside their heart was decayed. The Sabbath, he asked the question, is it better to obey the Sabbath law or to see people healed of blindness? Talks about the heart. Authority, he talks about the heart of authority over the position of authority. Even when it comes to issues of divorce, he talks about the heart where they talk about people come to him with questions of legality, of adultery. He says, oh, now you say... If they commit adultery. But if a man lusts after a woman in his heart, he commits adultery. He's talking about the heart of the issue. So we need to understand when it comes to money and our finances, uh, in the broader context of things, Jesus is talking about the heart. The heart of the resources that he's given us. The heart of what we do with what we have been given. This morning we're going to unpack a very famous passage found in Luke chapter 6, verse 37. So go ahead and turn there as well. If you have uh, your phone, you can look us up in the Bible app. Just search uh, Crossroads Church in your events. If Spanish is your preferred language to read in or to speak, we have notes for you in Spanish as well. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 says this, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will it be poured into your lap? For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just pray we worship you today. We ask that as we open up your word and unpack your word, you would make our hearts fertile soil to where 
we can leave this place and manage what you've given us to manage the best that we can. I pray that you would bless each home that is represented here today. Let your spirit change us and make us look, talk, and love more like your son, Jesus Christ, than we did when we walked into this place. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys ready to, to dive into this passage this morning? Y'all with me today? Can't just make it your own. We're, we're all together. To only view this passage. Now, let me ask this question first. How many of you have ever heard this passage, Luke chapter 6, 37, 38, preached before? Have you, how many of you have ever heard this passage, given, it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap? You've heard this before. Now, in what context have you always heard this passage preached on? Money. Me, anytime I've ever heard this preached, it was preached on money. But if you look at the beginning of this statement, the beginning of this teaching, what does Jesus say? What does he start with? Judge not. Judging, which is an issue of what? The heart. Condemn not, which is an issue of? So to view this passage only in the context or through the lens of finances would be a great disservice to the Word of God. In fact, if you throw back a few pages to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, you will read its parallel verse in the book of Matthew, and it says this, Do not judge so that you won't be judged, for you will be given, you'll be judged by the same standard with which you judge others, and you'll be measured by the same measure you use. In fact, in Matthew, it does not even mention the portion on giving. So to put this in full context, this is talking about the matter of our heart. Now let me tell you this, Luke chapter 6, verse 37, 38, will either to you be the greatest passage ever or the worst. It all depends on what you're given. Think about this. Give, and in the same manner, it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, this is, a, this is in reference to people who would go into the fields, and they would gather uh, wheat in the fields, and some people would just gather and get a good measure, a decent measure, fill up the basket, and go. But other people would come, and they would get in there, and they'd press it down, and they'd shake it just to make sure all the air, all the space was filled at the basket. And then they would put more in and press it down and shake it. So by whatever you give in your life, you will receive in like measure. So if you are sarcastic, you will receive sarcasm. If you're jealous, you will receive if you are envious, you will receive envy. But if you're patient, if you're joyful, if you're hopeful, if you're always looking for the negative, you will always find what you're looking for. But if you're always looking for the positive, you will always find what you're looking for. Are you, are you guys with me today? So either this verse in your life is great news and you're like, yes, or you're going, uh-oh. It's all a matter of what you are sowing in your life, what you are giving. My desire is for everyone to experience God's best this morning. In order to do that, we must manage our resources well. In order to do that, we must manage and give with the right heart. You see, God does not just bless giving. He blesses the heart behind the giving. Luke 6, 2 gives us two hearts that we must overcome in order to live God's best. Like I said, the, our churches are filled with people who give resources, but they have the wrong hearts. And so for some of you, you've, you, it's okay, you know, you can write a check for something, but you don't experience the blessings of God, and you say, well, it's, it's false, it's a farce. No, 
I need to check your heart. And this is not, this goes beyond just a Sunday morning offering. It goes to the heart of which we live our lives. Some of us are free with our resources but stingy with our hearts. God does not bless giving. He blesses the heart behind the giving. And Luke chapter 6 gives us two hearts that we can overcome to experience a generous, joyful, and giving life. To experience his best. The first heart to overcome in order to experience God's best is a selfish heart. Write that down. Selfish heart or a judgmental heart. Because the first thing Jesus says in here is judge not and you will not be judged. Now, I think there is a difference between passing what's called a righteous and holy judgment and having a judgmental heart. Because a judgmental heart will always look for the negative. It will always look for something it can pick apart. It will always look for something that's wrong. A judgmental heart is always a selfish heart. If you run across somebody who's, you all know those, we all got somebody, an aunt or uncle or cousin or somebody who's always looking to put somebody else down, right? The smallest people can only make themselves feel big by making others small. And it's birthed out of selfishness. So the first heart we need to look at and we need to examine ourselves with is, do I have a selfish heart? Now, Luke 6 has been so often incorrectly used to promote selfish hearts. So often we hear it said, listen, you need to give, you need to sow, you need to give. Why? Because if you give, you're going to get. You want God's blessings, so give so you can get God's blessings. No, God's blessings are the reward for the right heart. They are not the reason why we give. And we as a church, as a big C church, the church universal, we have got to get out of this mentality of the only reason why we give is so we can get something in return. That's not right. we got to get out of that. We've got to break that habit of being taught and teaching our people that if you want to get, then you got to give because giving is just a means to an end. It is not. That is selfishness. Let me give you guys an give you an exercise to try. All right, because wait, I'm I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'll push that back later. God blesses the heart of giving, and let's be honest. If we're truly honest, we are all a little bit selfish. I mean, it's okay. I'm selfish. My daughter, Kaylee, selfish. She's three. It's okay. We're trying to break her of her pacifier. And she has recently, like, rediscovered the pacifier. And the funny thing is, is she's big enough now that she just sticks it between her teeth and chews on it. You know? Like one of those old detective movies in black and white where the, you know, the gumshoe's always got this big stogie in his mouth. I'm just chewing on her. Ah, you see, you know, like those old gangsters. She just got it dangling out of her mouth. And so we try to say, hey, you don't want that passy. I want that passy. No, you don't. It's a shooey passy. She goes, it's my shooey passy. <laughs> Selfish. But if I'm completely honest, I'm, I'm no different than that as an adult. Let me give you yet another example. A little part of me dies each time my kids come up and take my food. <laughs> Dads, you know what I'm talking about. Because for some reason, Dad always has the best tasting food in the house, doesn't he? Like it, it could be the same spaghetti pulled from the same pot. But Dad's, for some reason, taste better. Dad, I want this. I want that. My son Garrett, he, he doesn't, doesn't even know what it is. If he hears somebody talking about something, I want that. I want it. No, you don't. <laughs> you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And here's the truth of it. I give, I'm very giving about, uh, with my food. I always, I never say no. I don't do it out of a good heart. I do it because my dad was the most selfish man when it came to food ever. 
And I have memories of a child going, Daddy, can I have a brownie? No, it's my brownie. Get away. And the only reason why I give food to my kids is because I have memories of my father not giving food to me. And so I begrudgingly every time, Daddy, can I have a piece of your brownie? Fine. <laughs> my brownie. I worked hard for that brownie. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, we're all a little selfish. And this is something we all need to check our hearts on and manage the selfishness of our hearts. God blesses the heart behind our giving. God wants us to give our finances with the right heart, but he also wants us to give of our time, our attention, our patience with the right heart. These are things that we need to manage well and the heart behind how we manage them. The remedy, the remedy for a selfish heart is a forgiving heart because it says, he says, judge not lest you be judged, forgive. Let's partner it up together. Forgiveness is the remedy of a selfish and judgmental heart. Judging holds on to hurt and pain and demands retribution. But forgiveness lets go and frees. And so often when we forgive, it's not the other person who's needing the freedom. Because there are times you will forgive somebody and they won't care. But that's okay. Because ultimately when you forgive, you are freeing yourself from the pain and the hurt. And when you forgive, you take that burden and you lay it at the feet of our Heavenly Father. And where our shoulders are not strong enough to carry around that pain, His shoulders are. And we can free ourselves from the weight of that pain through forgiveness. The second heart that we need to overcome to experience God's best is a controlling heart. It says in Luke, condemn not and you won't be condemned. To condemn is to pass judgment and to seek control of the outcome of that judgment. I remember being a young youth pastor and talking to somebody around my age and they told me, Mark, I give 10% to this church. And if since I give 10% to this church, it's not this church, it's a church somewhere else. Since I give 10%, I expect to see X, Y, and Z. I will tell you this, that's the wrong heart. That's a controlling heart. You see, we're, we can be giving as long as we like the outcome of our gift. I'm going to say that again. We can be giving as long as we're okay and we like the outcome of our gift. Now, let me give you an example. Here's something to try to help us break ourselves. Just try it once. Just try it once with me. When you're driving down the road and you stop at the end of an overpass and you see somebody out asking for money, I challenge you, give them cash and don't worry about how it's going to be spent. Because sometimes having a controlling heart is our excuse to not give at all. Well, I don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. And, and more than just money and finances, we're talking with our time and our patience. I don't know if I want to give that. I, I could go and try to, try to seek restoration in that relationship, but they're not going to listen to me. It's not about us controlling the outcome. It's not about us having everything figured out. It's about giving. Matthew 6.21 says this, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Now, I will tell you many, many times, we quote this and we are taught this backwards. We say, where your heart is, your treasure will be. No, it's not what the Bible says. Treasure does not follow your heart. Your heart follows your treasure. Let me give you an example. We're sitting down, let's say you and I or you and a group of people are sitting down and you're watching a, a, a game. 
could be baseball, could be, could be a sport that you could care less about involving two teams that you don't even know about. And someone turns to you and says, hey, let's make this game more interesting. What are they talking about? They're talking about betting. They're talking about putting money on, right? Let's make this more interesting. You could care less about that sport. You could care less about those teams. But the moment you put money down on the outcome, you become intimately invested on what the outcome is going to be because your heart follows your treasure. Let me give you another example. I like red Corvettes, but I could care less about red Corvettes. When I drive down the street and I see a red Corvette Corvette parked in a Walmart parking lot, I'm not going to get out and stop and check the, the tire pressure. I'm not going to wash it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stop and make sure there's no dings on it or scratches on it. Why? Because it's not mine. But if I drop $80,000 on a brand new red Corvette, you better believe I'm going to be checking the tire pressure every morning. I'm going to be washing it when I can. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to take care of it. Why? Because I've invested money in that. And so now I'm invested in how the, the status and the health and well-being of that machine. Yeah. Your heart follows your treasure. That's why it is important to give to the house of God. You see, some of us in here, and some people not just here in churches all over America, don't give a lick about the church because they've not given a lick to the church. Some of us have family members we don't give a lick about because we've not invested any time or passion or effort to care about them. Your heart follows your treasure. And in order to position ourselves to live the best life that God has for us, we need to start investing in the right things. So often in my life, I invest in the wrong things. They're not bad things. I could just be investing in better things. And we're taught by our society to invest in the wrong things. But God wants you and I to invest in the right things. Because where your treasure is placed, your heart will follow. Men, women, hear me. Husbands, wives, hear me. If you find yourself to where your marriage is strained currently, start investing in that other person. They may make you mad. They may have said things to hurt you. And it may be very difficult. But I guarantee if you start investing in that other person, your heart will follow. So often we start investing ourselves in the back door. You hear me? So often when things get tough in our marriage, what we want to do is start investing our time, our effort, and our passions and our thoughts on the back door. Oh, if I could just be free, if I could just leave, I could just, just, I just need a week just, just away from that person. Just, I just need some time just to be by myself. You are investing in the back door. And your heart is following your thoughts and your investments straight out the back door. You all with me? But if we invest ourselves in the stay, then our hearts will begin to follow. This morning is not about guilting anyone into giving, not at all, but the truth remains. Your heart follows your passion. Your heart follows your passion. The remedy of a controlling heart is a giving heart. Giving cuts any strings that may be attached. This is critical to getting freedom in your life and in your finances. We have to break our hearts of being controlling. When we do, we give freely, then God's blessings will begin to flow. Like I said, God doesn't bless giving. He blesses the heart behind giving. As we close today, oh, I just thought of something, you know, I'm supposed to go out to eat 
for lunch today and I, I didn't bring any cash on me. I don't have any cash to go out to eat. Have you ever done that? And you're just like, oh, oh thank you, Pastor Marcia. Look at that. Pastor Marcia, give me some money. That's awesome. Now I can go out to eat. The reason why she did that one so quick to do that is because that was my money. I gave it to her at the start of the service to give to me for this illustration. But here's the thing. Pastor Marshall, you don't grieve the loss of that money, do you? No, not at all, because it wasn't yours. You were just holding on to it for a while. I'm going to say that again. You don't grieve the loss of those resources because it wasn't yours. They were somebody else's, and you're holding on to them for a while. We serve a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Every good thing that you and I have is a gift from Him. We need to understand that our resources, everything that we have, I'm not just talking about money, guys. I'm talking about time, talents, everything. Everything we have is a gift from Him entrusted to us to use for a time until He returns. And so when we give, we shouldn't grieve the loss of that because it's not ours his. And just like the parable of the talents, God gives five to one, three to another, and one to a third. The money was not theirs. Those talents were not theirs. They were the masters, and they were meant to be put to use until such a time that the master returned. So many of us were sitting and burying talents, desires, passion, finances, forgiveness. Because we're afraid to use them. We want to control what the outcome is going to be. And we are afraid we will grieve the loss of putting those things into use. But they are meant to be used. Are you all with me this morning? Until such a time as the Master returns. So this morning, if everybody would stand to your feet, Managing our finances begins with managing our hearts. It's so much deeper than a Sunday morning offering. And if all you got out of this was the preacher wants us to give more money, then I humbly apologize to you from the bottom of my heart. Because if that's the case, then I did not do Scripture justice. Because it's about more than that. Much, much, much more than that. Because our finance is just one part of the resources that God has given us to use. And it's about the heart. Being free of a selfish heart. Being free of a controlling heart. When we do that, then we can start giving of our resources and we'll start to see the blessings of God flow. That's not the reason why we give. It's just the reward. It's the icing on the cake. If everybody would bow your heads and close your eyes today. I'm going to pray over you, and then we're going to take up an offering for Moe's Envy. But before we do, I want to ask this question. Is there anybody in this place, first and foremost, you find yourself away from God this morning? Maybe you prayed a prayer a few years ago or a long time ago. But you know, life has gotten in your way. Maybe you've never prayed this prayer. Maybe you never made that conscious decision, that decision of the heart to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I don't want to let this moment and opportunity pass without giving you a chance to meet the Lord of Lords, our Savior, our Redeemer, the God above all other gods. There is no other God but our God. So if you're in this place and you find yourself far away from the Lord, would you be brave enough? Would you be courageous enough to raise your hand and say, Pastor Mark, pray for me and pray with me. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life, either for the first time or the first time in a long time. Anybody in this place would be, would be courageous enough. Go ahead, put your hand up, put it back down. Yes, in the back. Anybody? Yes, right there. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, there is freedom. There is freedom in the Lord. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want everybody in the house to repeat this after me as a sign of solidarity with those who did raise their hands. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. We believe you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, 
to live a perfect life, to die on the cross, but to be risen again. We believe he is seated at your right hand and that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Cleanse us. Remove all sin. Remove anything that separates us from you. Live in our hearts for the rest of our days. Amen. With every eye closed and head bowed still, um, I want to ask one final question. Are you in this place? You say, Pastor Mark, I need freedom from either a selfish heart or a controlling heart. But I want to live out God's best. I want freedom from that. Would you raise your hand so I can pray with you today? Yeah, I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to raise my hand. <laughs> yeah, hands going up all across this place. It's about freedom. It's about freedom. Let's pray together today. Heavenly Father, we glorify, we magnify your name. I pray for freedom in this place. Freedom in this place. Freedom from a selfish or judgmental heart. Freedom from a controlling heart. Lord, there are people in our lives that have hurt us. They've bruised us, but I pray that we would be forgiving and we would be giving. For those are the remedy of a selfish and a controlling heart. I pray that we would walk from this place today and experience a lightness, a buoyancy, a joy in your presence. Change us. I pray a blessing on every household here. I pray, I pray a blessing on every marriage. I pray a blessing on children and grandchildren. Protect us. We thank you for it, God. We worship you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. Before we dismiss, real quickly, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. And this is something we do every so often. We're taking up a special offering right now for the nation of Mozambique. What we've been doing in this nation is we have been building churches. We've put our efforts into building churches out in what's known as the bush, out in the far away from cities where there are very, very limited resources. Many churches, many people are gathering under trees. They have no place to call a home, a church home. And so um, we are sending resources down and building churches, places for people to meet and gather so that people can hear about this amazing gospel and a new life in Jesus Christ. We're now starting to expand our focus on building in cities. We're beginning in the nation, in the city of Tet. Because we believe it is the basic human right for all people on this earth to hear a clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe it is a human right, the same that uh, clean water, fresh air, and food is a right of all humans to have those things. We believe just as important is the right to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And your faithful giving has allowed us to give um, close to $80,000 so far from our year commitment that happened at the beginning of May. God is using your faithfulness to impact and affect an entire nation. And we're not stopping. We're going to keep moving forward. Why? Because there are people who deserve the right to hear about Jesus Christ. Thank you for your faithfulness. Let's pray. And then as the just uh, pass your way, as soon as they pass your way, then you can uh, be free to be dismissed and have a wonderful day in the Lord today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you would bless this offering multiplied. Use it to love people everywhere. Use us to love people everywhere. To not have judgmental hearts, but to truly love people. Not to have selfish or controlling hearts, but to love people. Use us as a living offering. Giving of our resources, our time, our passions, our love to help change a world. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. And like I said, as soon as the buckets pass your way, 
uh, you can consider yourselves to be dismissed this morning. And uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine down upon you and give you the best week ever. And remember, services have ended, but the church is not. We are his church. Amen. We are his family. Let's go out and be his church this week. God bless you. Have an amazing week.